we are actually actually a laser manufacturer and um actually uh, we are part of the trump group now so um uh, I, I assume the laser manufacturer you talked about was uh, maybe trump and um yeah, but today I'm going to talk about our XV uh, sources and uh, I'm talking about high harmonic generation. So those are coherent XV sources, uh, uh, mainly for imaging so far. And um, yeah, I can maybe so much time, the key message a far growing company and especially since Trump bought the majority of our shares, uh, they also willing to invest even more in this facility. So we have 50 people now working here in Jena and uh, the number is growing. Um, we have plenty of products, and uh, as you can see, we also have a two micron laser, a thulium laser, not at seven joules of energy, but it's also ultra fast pulses. So this would be extremely challenging, uh, especially at these high web rates, but we can offer up to one kilowatt of average power with uh, thulium. And we also use our uh, terbium and uh, thulium lasers to uh, drive our XUV generation. And um, in principle, what is available at the moment using one micron lasers uh, is uh, 20 electron volts up to 150 electron volts. Uh, so uh, below 10 nanometers uh, of, of wavelength. And uh, using the thulium based systems, we can push this further towards the water window. So this uh, is a quite exciting topic in itself. But today I want to talk more about uh, sources driven by terbium uh, lasers. Uh, of course, the high harmonic generation process, I think you are all familiar with that. Um, it enables you to get into, uh, to produce femto to attosecond pulse durations in the XUV and uh, coherent radiation. The applications, uh, there's a wide range of applications. Of course, the focus here uh, is certainly coherent effective imaging. And um, for all these applications, it's typically beneficial if you have a high repetition rate. Um, because you want to have a fast acquisition time, you want to uh, not necessarily have too many events per pulse for some experience, experiments. So um, yeah, most applications actually benefit from higher repetition rates and don't necessarily need so much photons per shot. And um, yeah, since we have turbine lasers up to two kilowatts of average power at 100 kilohertz repetition rates or higher, um, we have lots of different sources that we can use to drive the XUV beamlines that we set up. But typically for these XUV beamlines, um, it is sufficient to start with a 100 watt class system that delivers up to one millijoule uh, and 300 femtoseconds. And uh, the 300 femtoseconds might be sufficient for some applications, but very often you want to have shorter pulses. And in that case, you can use a post compression technique. Um, we switch to multipass cell compression techniques entirely by now. So the gold standard used to be capillary techniques, but uh, they are much less resilient against uh, yeah, fluctuations of the incoming beam. And uh, you have to change the capillaries and lots of stuff. But in the multipass cells, you have extraordinary high efficiency. So you can actually compress 300 femtoseconds down to 35 femtoseconds uh, with more than 90% efficiency. Um, and this is already a very suitable driver for uh, for a high harmonic generation. And uh, if you want, you can even compress it further down to the few cycle regime. This enables at second signs, but that's not really so important here, I guess. And uh, yeah, these uh, technologies enable us to uh, use a very compact and simple setup. So actually we can start with a, a 100 watt class system or here uh, it can have even a little bit less of average power. And then we have this uh, post compression afterwards and um, this enables, yeah, or this provides us with uh, 60 watts and sub 40 femtosecond pulses at 500 kilohertz repetition rate. And uh, if we send this into the uh, XUV chamber that we have, so basically focus it into the gas jet and have all the suitable phase matching and um, all the suitable regimes uh, optimized, um, then we generate uh, an XUV output that can basically cover a wide range of photon energies. So uh, depending on the gas we use uh, for this particular system here, this is a system that's installed at the ARCNL uh, uh, within the LINX project. And uh, we have on the left side, you can see the spectrum you generate if you use argon as a gas in the gas jet, um, which is centered around 72 electron volts. And you can push it much further towards 150 electron volts uh, if you're using neon. 
And uh, this is really only done by changing the gas. This can be done during the operation. So this is quite a uh, quite nice uh, way to cover a large range of uh, photon energies if you want to. And um, as you can see for some of the harmonic lines we have generated here, uh, the fluxes we achieved in this particular system actually stayed world record fluxes for these photon energies. This is, uh, yeah, here's a long-term stability measurement for these uh, two setups as well. And um, you can see we have RMS noise in the harmonic output so in the xuv radiation of around one percent which is extremely stable and really suitable for long-term operation uh, this particular device was uh, actually limited by the small gas um, bottle that we had so um, uh, usually or what you want to have for a long-term operation you want to have a gas recycling system which is something we are working on at the moment or you can use a larger bottle then you can uh, operate it continuously for a longer time um, yeah, the, um, maybe to, to put this into a perspective, uh, this is a plot that shows the average power of different photon energies that uh, what was achieved over time. And uh, on the right, you can see all the references. And uh, there are basically three main techniques to generate uh, harmonics uh, or three main lasers uh, types you can use. You can use enhancement cavities, which are also driven uh, by a laser. But uh, this is uh, one technique that that you generate the harmonics within an enhancement cavity. You can use titanium sapphire systems, the classical approach, um, or you can use fiber sources. And they usually have the advantage that they have much higher average power. So uh, you often the flux scales with average power. So this gives you more freedom um, uh, when it comes to high power sources. And uh, the source I just talked about is, is shown here. Uh, so around 70 e volts and above 100 e volts this is uh, the highest it has been done so far and uh, it's also worth mentioning that if you um, use the second harmonic generation of ethereum so 515 nanometers uh, you can generate extremely high flux at uh, around 26 e volts and this is a very simple source as well so it's just a laser second harmonic generation uh, compression and um, the, the high harmonics. So um, as you can see, this is actually the highest flux that has ever been uh, achieved uh, using high harmonic generation. Um, yeah, and fiber lasers drive most of these high flux tabletop coherent XUV sources. So this is just a spec sheet. No, don't, don't worry. I won't get into the details of the spec sheet now. Uh, I just want to show you that we have a wide range of possibilities that we can offer. And I want to talk about the add-ons a little bit more. So if you look at a typical XV beam line that we could provide, it starts with the laser and you have a post compression and um, the actual vacuum chambers where the generation happens and uh, everything else happens. And we have lots of different options that you can add depending on your application. You can add a monochromator already inside these chambers. It can also be combined with the focusing unit. Sometimes that makes sense, of course, if you have uh, optics anyways that you uh, optimize them for one line. Um, we can also provide uh, so-called dual colored drivers, which means um, that uh, instead of only 1030 nanometers, you only get 550, you also get 9, 515 nanometers. And you can switch between these two wavelengths. And this uh, allows you to access even a wider range of photon energies. So you can really use one source to uh, cover the entire range from 20 electron volts up to 150 electron volts, which is not necessarily so important for imaging because you want to have a long wave, a, a high photon energy for that very often, but it's important for many other fundamental science uh, applications. Um, and this is really in the same beamline and you can uh, switch between those uh, quite easily. Uh, we also have the possibility to offer polarization tunability now. So um, you can switch between uh, horizontal or vertical polarization um, during operation as well. Uh, this is uh, also quite new and even circular polarization is possible on a request. Um, then depending on what you want to do, if you want to have us uh, optimizing the focusing already, we uh, also can do that. Uh, we have a partner here in Jena as well who has uh, yeah, who can provide us with uh, excellent XUV optics. And differential pumping is often a topic. And uh, of course, it makes sense if you have a focusing beam line, then you use it uh, for differential pumping as well. 
uh, but this is always optimized to the customer's desires. And uh, usually it's also interesting to have a spectrometer available for the operation. So you can monitor the flux you have, you can monitor the exact position of the, uh, or the exact wavelength of the XUB output. And um, this can be integrated can I... into the beamline. Um, uh, so, so you can even monitor during operation. Yeah, you could use a fraction of the light or um, you can you can switch between the actual output and the spectrometer and you can uh, like yeah monitor the spectrum before you start your experiment so these are all modules that we have available and can be integrated uh, into the device if desired and um yeah since we are part of the trump group now this also gives us a much wider range of lasers that we can play with yeah we used to have only our fiber sources which are great for most things but sometimes especially if you want to have a high flux per shot uh, it could make sense to use a different laser. And uh, also, if you want to optimize something for uh, industrial reliability, uh, it could make sense to use a Trump system if it's already there. So these are all things we're working on at the moment and we can already offer uh, to, to use different lasers in front of our sources. So uh, this is quite exciting for us uh, to uh, be able to play with these different systems. Yeah, and uh, so this uh, leads to my conclusion and outlook already. Um, yeah, what, what can I conclude? We have a wide range of photon energy available that you can access with our coherent XUV sources. Uh, regarding the bandwidth and the pulse duration, of course, it depends on what is uh, desired. This also is influenced by the pulse duration of the input laser. So, so the laser you use to generate the XUV uh, defines the bandwidth and pulse duration of the output. So we have uh, lots of different options there. Um, I talked about the modular add-ons, monochromization, focusing, differential pumping, and uh, we can achieve uh, record flux values for uh, a wide range of photon energies. So for very high photon energies, uh, all the way to uh, the 26.6 electron volts that you can uh, access easily using green lasers. Please wrap yeah. up. Okay, and as an outlook, um, further extension into the water window is, um, is our next topic. And also the gas recycling, recycling, of course, price optimizations is always a topic. But as you can see on the left side, uh, we have turnkey XUV sources available starting from below 200 kilo euros now. Uh, so if that is interesting to you, uh, you're always welcome to get in touch with us. Uh, thank you. Okay, hey, thanks, Sven. So then the, the floor is open to questions. Please raise hands. And while we're waiting for a raised hand, I have one question. Okay. So on, on one of your earlier slides, so I did not know that on the slide number, you have the, where you said that the bottle runs out. That's one of the, the limitations mm -hmm. of, the, uh, mm -hmm. of the system. Can you go to the slide? I was wondering what happens at 1.4 hours. Uh, the spectrum seemed to shift. Yeah. 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 Pixel number. So is this the, the spectrum that shifts at the 1.4 hours in the left lower? Um, here? The mid, middle lower plot. Oh, here. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, it looks like uh, like this might have been an issue with. Uh, that's a really good question. So, so it looks like the the central wave. No, it's not the central wave. Thing. You can see there's actually a bit higher efficiency here. Yeah, it doesn't point. look like a shift. Eh? It looks no, it's like not. Yeah, this is uh, maybe it jumped into some sort of a different regime for some reason. Yeah, it's a good question. I, I will I will ask the colleague who did the measurement. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if, if you can, if you can tell more about it, but he actually, yeah, the, the, the issue was, it was a bit difficult at the end where you had to, uh, or the, the pressure was adjusted, uh, the, the, the pressure in the bottle changed. So the, the, um, um, yeah, the, the pressure that was sent into the gas jet, uh, had to be corrected a little bit. This was done automatically, but maybe something happened there. I don't know. Yeah. I can, I can ask. Okay. Thanks. And I'll ask my colleagues, they, they are using the links, uh, links machine. I have to look it up again. Ah, okay. Yeah, sure. So you can ask uh, Sven, yeah. uh, uh, Sven Werdenburg, right? Yeah, thanks. Um, Jessica? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, Vivek here. Hey, uh, Sven, uh, uh, did I hear you correctly? You said you had the highest or the record uh, high harmonic generation output for 13.5, 13.3 nanometer? No, not for 13.5, no. Uh, you can actually okay. see here, um, you can actually see here that uh, at this range, we have, uh, we have the highest flux and in this range, um, but in this range, there are not all plots in here. This is only what was like published in, in papers or talks. So this was done by a, a friend of mine at the university. Um, but uh, I, I think uh, CESAR-based sources have the advantage uh, that the cutoff energy is lower 
you know, if you look at the spectrum, uh, our cutoff energy is relatively high. And this is also the regime where high harmonic generation works most efficiently. Um, okay. This is because we start with 1030 nanometers here. And um, this means that we actually have a higher flux at 130 electron volts than we have at 19 elect 90 electron volts. And 90 electron volts is a 13.5 nanometers. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay, thank you.